Hello parents and students, I'm Ms. Fanning, research teacher at the STEM Academy. I would like to guide and assist you through the requirements and helpful resources for completing science fair this year. Let's start with topic selection. Selecting a topic can be the most daunting part of completing a science fair project. Most scientific experiments are the result of observations made and questions asked about the natural world. Thus, step one is make an observation. Making an observation in the natural world can account for anything from biology and chemistry to physics and engineering. By asking questions about how, what, why, when, which, etc., it can lead to the next step, creating a testable question. Before we get to selecting a testable question, it is important to note the STEM Academy requests that students do not choose topics that involve human test subjects or vertebrate animals as test subjects. And please note, any experiments involving chemicals or bacteria will need a qualified scientist to approve and oversee the experiment. Now, back to the testable question. A testable question is one that can be answered by designing and conducting an experiment. Testable questions are always about changing one thing to see what the effect is on another thing. Examples of testable questions. How does the shape of a pendulum affect its pivot point? Which foods do mealworms prefer? How does the salinity level affect the growth of algae in a fish tank? Once a testable question has been decided, determine what the independent, dependent, and control variables will be. A variable is anything that changes in a scientific experiment. The control is what you use to compare the results at the end of the experiment. The control variable is your baseline or starting point. It is how something already exists in nature without manipulation. The independent variable, also known as the manipulated variable, is the variable that causes a change in the dependent variable. The independent variable for the pendulum question would be the different shapes of pendulums tested. The independent variable for the mealworm question would be the different types of food tested. The independent variable for the algae in a fish tank question is the different levels of salinity. The dependent variable, also known as the responding variable, it is the variable in which a measurable change occurs. Some sort of numerical measurement must be recorded for each test conducted on the dependent variable. The dependent variable for the pendulum question is the measure of change in millimeters for the pivot point for each pendulum shape. The dependent variable for the mealworm question is the measurement in milligrams of each food source before eaten as compared to after eaten. The dependent variable of the algae in a fish tank question is the measurement of the growth of algae in square centimeters for each salinity level. Now it is time to see what has already been determined by doing some background research. Background research needs to come from reliable sources. Most educational publications or specific field journals are the best places to look. You can find many resources just by searching on Google Scholar. Educational, scientific, or government studies will have the most reliable information. Utilize this helpful chart to determine if your source is reliable. After finding, thoroughly reading, and taking notes on each of the sources, students will write the background research section of the paper. Remember, with all scientific writing, do not use personal pronouns. Included in the resources folder is a step-by-step -step guide for writing the three to five paragraphs of the background research section. The paper should follow the APA guidelines for formatting. All sections of the paper should be written in Times New Roman 12-point font. The background research helps students to know the best direction for starting their experiment as they have learned from what they have already done, what has worked or what has not in the past or previous experiments. They may even determine an entirely new way to approach the experiment.
Before experimentation can be done, the experiment must be planned. The research plan is a step-by-step -step guide that will allow students to repeat the same procedures for each trial of the experiment conducted. The more trials conducted, the more accurate the results will be. Remember, with all scientific writing, do not use personal pronouns. There is a research plan template in the folder that is blank that students may make a copy of and use for planning their experiment. And there is one that has been completed as an example. Let's take a closer look. After determining your hypothesis, the introduction to your research paper is the next section to be written. It gives the reader an overview of the hypothesis, of what the expected outcomes are. Remember, with all scientific writing, do not use personal pronouns. Conduct the experiment by following exactly each time conducted the procedures you have written step by step. Do not leave out a step for any trial. It may even be helpful to take pictures during the experimentation process, especially since you are showing cause and effect. A before and after picture for each experiment can give the reader of the paper more insight into the project. Even if a mistake is made, record the results and note what the mistake was. Do not alter any of your data. After a minimum of three to five trials have been conducted and the data for each experimental trial has been recorded, it is time to analyze the data. Experiments are conducted by students out of class, at home, or in the specified environment or facility. Analysis of data. Graphs and charts are the best way to visualize the data collected for analysis. Remember, the independent variable goes on the x-axis, the bottom horizontal line, and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis, the left-hand side, the vertical one. Take a look at this ha helpful, handy display. The results section of the research plan should be written after the data is analyzed. The results are a factual discussion of the outcome of the experiment. This section is where data is represented with charts, pie graphs, line graphs, bar graphs, etc. The visual depiction of data helps the reader to better understand and interpret the outcome. Remember, with all scientific writing, do not use personal pronouns. The conclusion and discussion section of the research plan is the final part that needs to be completed. The conclusion and discussion is a sharing of knowledge with peers and readers. The conclusion will discuss whether the hypothesis was supported or not supported and why. This section should also include next steps for future experimentation or how the findings may be applied to real-life situations or applied in the future. Discuss the knowledge gained throughout the experiment. Remember, with all scientific writing, do not use personal pronouns. Once the research plan is completed, this entire document may be inserted into the research paper after the background research section. The final part of the paper to be written is the abstract. There is a copy of the instructions in the resource folder. An abstract is a summary of the entire experiment and outcome. It is published with a research paper as a preview of what the investigation or experimentation is about. An abstract allows other scientists and readers to scan the information in the paper quickly. The abstract should be a little less technical than the paper itself. It should intrigue the reader to keep reading the full content. In the abstract, there is a maximum of 250 words. You can use the word count under the tools heading in your document to help you stay within the required limits. As with all scientific writing, remember, no personal pronouns. The next steps are the organization of the research paper. Instructions for all sections are included in the resource folder. It is time to create a title page. The title page should have the title of the project, student name, school name, and date. The text on this page should have the font bolded and centered on the page.
The Table of Contents section should be added next. The Table of Contents should accurately record each section of the paper with the corresponding page number. It is placed after the title page. The Table of Contents lists the important sections of the paper. The section headings are on the left side of the page and the page number is on the right side of the page. It should begin with the abstract on page 1. The final section of the paper is the bibliography page. The bibliography section should utilize the APA style of bibliography formatting. Here is an example of how it should look. Please utilize the examples in the resources folder to guide you through each section of this project and for exact placement for, of each section in your research paper. The science fair project should culminate with a project poster. The poster presents your work in one easy-to-view and read location. There is a template in the resources folder and the information written in each section of the paper can be copied and pasted onto the poster. Make sure to include relevant pictures, graphs, and charts on your poster. See the following examples from former STEM student projects. As always, the research teachers are here to support and guide you or your student throughout the project. Please feel free to ask questions during class sessions or via email. We look forward to the innovative projects that will be undertaken and accomplished by our students this year. Thank you for your time.